So I have this Apple TV power supply, third generation, that came in to me to be repaired. The customer says, hello, here's the third generation Apple TV power supply unit. Voltages should be present without the logic board, so it's not needed, I hope. Couldn't find any schematics, but a quick Google search will show the voltages on each pin. Thank you, and keep me posted via email. So here's a quick close-up view of it right here. I see an opto-isolator. I see a couple of diodes. There's a couple of 6.8 microfarad, 400 volts. They're not bulged whatsoever. There's a MOV, it looks like. There's the main switching transformer, an output choke, and then over here are a couple of output capacitors, 560 at 6.3 volts. Yes, 560 at 6.3. Let's look at the bottom of the board. Two more opto-isolators. Uh, it looks like at least a control FET to switch it on and off. There's the switching transformer once again. There is the main controller IC right there, a bridge rectifier. And then over here we have, under the PP09, I believe it's an input filter choke. So anyhow, there is a close-up view of the Apple TV third generation power supply. So for the main power supply switching controller IC, this uses an Infineon ICE3BR4765JG fixed frequency 650 volt cool set in DSO 12 package. And so if you want to take a look at some of the specs on it, here they are. And then down here is a typical application. Okay, so pretty basic power supply here. Uh, we've got the AC input right here, 85 to 270 volts through a full wave bridge rectifier and a filter capacitor, and then there is a snubber network right here. And we feed that into the transformer. Out of the transformer, it goes into the main power supply controller FET. And I've noted the pin numbers on here for easy reference. So out of the FET, it goes through an R-Sense resistor, and that is the resistor that detects whether this is in an overload state. Once the voltage on this resistor is over a certain predetermined amount, it causes the pulse width modulation controller to begin to fold back and not drive this FED as hard as to not over amp this little power supply controller IC. So now on this pin, pin 3 is the feedback pin. What they do is they look at the output voltage before the PI output filter network. So this is the first filter cap, this is the inductor, this is the second filter cap right here, and this is the main output voltage. So what they do is they take that output voltage, send it to an opto-isolator, which is electrically isolated side to side. There's no electrical connection from one side to the other. This is a precision 2.5 volt reference in most cases. And so these resistors set up the bias needed for this. And so once this resistor divider network biases it to 2.5 volts, this LED inside here will light up. It'll turn on this photo transistor and this will begin to conduct to hot ground. This is cold ground. This is hot ground. And so how this works is it oscillates this transformer right here. This is the bootstrap feedback. This is the bootstrap capacitor that allows this IC to run on its own from the voltages made from this transformer right here. So once this begins running, it's rectified, it's filtered through this capacitor, and it's fed back in here, and that's what controls the oscillation of this unit. So we get this thing to oscillate, we create a voltage right in here, we continue oscillation, we look at the input to this optical isolator. Once the predetermined voltage across this resistor divider network is achieved, it turns on this LED, which turns on this phototransistor. It knows it's at the correct output voltage, it begins to fold back. Once the load on this transformer increases, this voltage decreases slightly, this diode turns off, and it asks this thing to ramp up a little bit. Once it's 
achieved the bias voltage once again it's held at that voltage and from what i understand on this unit it's 3.4 volts output is what they're looking for i believe it's at 2.5 amps so that's a really quick rundown of how this switching power supply operates. So let's get this thing hooked up. We'll measure some voltages. And the main thing I wanna look at right off the bat is I wanna look at pins five, six, seven, and eight and make sure that I have about 160 volts, which in America is 120 volts AC input rectified through a full wave bridge rectifier and filtered through a capacitor. So 120 times 1.414 is what I wanna see right here. And so I expect to see a little bit of voltage. I'm not sure how they achieve this control voltage to begin with other than this says startup cell right here. And so once that 160 hits this, this should actually create a small amount of voltage to get this power supply to begin to oscillate a few times. Once it achieves oscillation, then this winding is going to take over onto this pin right here. So let's go ahead and check pins 5, 6, 7, and 8 in respect to hot ground. Remember, this is hot ground on this side and everything in between the optical isolator and this transformer on this side is cold ground. This is electrically isolated for safety. So let's get the meter hooked up. We'll plug it in, measure some voltages. So on the back of this, here's a real quick rundown on the pins. Pin two, extended blanking and auto restart enable. Pin three is the feedback pin from that optical isolator, which is what controls the pulse width modulation controller in this unit. Pin four is the current sense through that low value resistor to the drain to hot ground. It looks at the voltage across that resistor and limits how much power this thing can put out. 5678 drain of 650 volt integrated cool moss. Pin 11 is the VCC power supply. Supplies VCC pin is the positive supply of the IC. The operating range is between VCC off and VCC over voltage P, over voltage protect probably. And pin 12 is ground. And so here is a pin out of the IC itself. If you're interested, this is a much more detailed view of the internal workings of this IC. Everything's the same, full-way bridge, filter capacitor, snubber network, the secondary winding supplies the VCC, the startup cell, and we look at the R-Sense, the sensing resistor. Here's the optical isolator, the precision voltage reference. There's the output filter in a Pi output configuration. They Call this a Pi output because it represents the Pi 3.14 symbol. And then here's all the internal workings of the IC. If you're curious, you can pause that and take a look at it. But once again, let's go ahead and get this connected on the bench, measure some voltages, and I suspect this chip is probably what's defective on this board. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and unsolder the positive leads of both of these filter capacitors because these are actually in a Pi input configuration. In this tube right here is an actual inductor. So between the positive lead of one capacitor and the positive lead of another capacitor, there is an inductor. I'm also gonna go ahead and unsolder the positive lead of both of the output filter capacitors because they're once again in a Pi output configuration. I just wanna rule out a defective input filter capacitor or a defective output filter capacitor before I go any farther. Okay, so I've got the positive leads of the input filter capacitors unsoldered right here and the positive leads of the output filter capacitors unsoldered right there. So let's get the ESR meter out and we'll ESR those four caps and see if they check good or not. Okay, so let's verify lead integrity and we're right on zero, perfect. So first I'm gonna go ahead and measure from the negative lead to the pad and it barely moves the needle, so that's okay. So let's measure to the capacitor itself and I get about two and a half ohm. Now for the next one, about the same two and a half ohms, which isn't that bad, it's a fairly small value capacitor. This one's gonna be hard to get. Zero ohms and zero ohms, those both look perfectly fine. 
So it looks like the filter capacitors are perfectly fine. The input and output filter capacitors are fine. Let me go ahead and tack them down. We'll give this thing some voltage, get out the voltmeter and look at the pins on the IC. So voltage is applied right now. Let's go ahead and look at the input filter capacitors, both positive leads, and make sure we have about 165 volts on both of those. 164.1, 163.1, 163.2, 163, you know, it's kind of bouncing around, but about the same, about 164 on both of those. So pins 5, 6, 7, and 8 on the IC are the power supply 160 volt input through the transformer. Let's make sure we have good continuity through the transformer. So these four pins right here are 5, 6, 7, 8. And I have 164 volts. Let's make sure all of them are the same. And they are. So that's perfect. Let's look at pin 4. That's the sense resistor pin. And I should have 0, and I do. Keep in mind, I'm on hot ground right now, which is on the negative of the filter capacitors. How about pin 11? And I see 4 volts there. That should be enough for oscillation, but I get no output. Let me go ahead and move the voltmeter to the cold ground, and we'll measure some voltages over here on the output side. Okay, so now I'm on cold ground. So let's just look at the output voltage to begin with. And I get zero volts. Let's look at the positive of the filter capacitors. Zero. Zero. I have this big FET right here. Do I have any voltage on any pin whatsoever? No, I don't. So I'm thinking that with a 4 volt startup voltage, this should be oscillating and I should be seeing something on the output side of this power supply. So let's go ahead and change this chip and see if that takes care of the problem. I don't know if this chip is heat synced to the board or not, so I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of flux. helps the solder to melt easier and flow better. And I'll probably end up blocking the view with the hot air gun. All right, and the chip is off the board and it was glued to the circuit board. So I had to get the chip hot enough to melt that epoxy to get it off. Next, I'm gonna add some more flux. And I'm going to reflow the pads. Those look really good. Okay, the new chip is on the board but not soldered yet. It's just sitting here right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to get the pads warm. All right, there it is, all soldered to the board. Next, I'll let it cool for a few minutes. We'll get some acetone, clean up that flux with an acid brush, and we'll fire it back up and see if we get better results. All right, that looks really good. Well, next test, we'll fire it up and see what it does. Okay, new chip is on the board. Let's give it a power up. And I see it come up and then go down. Let's put on min-max. So we'll look at the maximum voltage produced. 3.599. So I don't understand what's going on with this thing. I spent some time troubleshooting it, checking various components on the bootstrap capacitor, the bootstrap diode. It just doesn't want to stay running. So I don't know if it's got a circuit board defect or, I mean, I checked the diode, I checked the capacitor, everything's great. It just won't continue to run on its own. Power on. It comes up to 3.4 volts like it should. One more time on min max. 3595. It's making the 3.4 volts. That's definitely more than we had. Uh, previously, I tested this and I got nothing on the output, not even a pulse. So unfortunately, I think this one is going to be another successful failure. Anyhow, I'm going to end it right there. 
that's it. I hope you enjoyed some part of this video. If you did, go ahead and leave me a comment, a question, a concern down below. If you have a tip on this, let me know. I'd really appreciate it. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Once again, if anybody's got some tips on this unit, please let me know. I'd really appreciate it. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching once again. Bye-bye.